the families and businesses that count on us to make the right and important decisions on a timely basis. So I urge my colleague on the Republican side, uh, wage a debate, wage, wage a spirited debate in defense of what you believe in, and we will too on the other side, but let's not drag this out for days and days and weeks. We don't have that much time. We've got to get down to business. Mr. President, I yield the floor. Mr. President. The junior senator from Virginia. Mr. President, I, I will be very brief, but I just want to commend my colleague and friend, the senator from Illinois, for his comments today and, and affirm his sentiments. Um, we've got two problems in front of us right now. One, an immediate problem on raising the debt ceiling, which, if we have a downgrade in our debt, will be a tax increase on every American family, every American business, uh, in the cost of higher interest rates. We have to get that debt ceiling raised. That has been something I've been advocating for over a year. But we also have to take the second step, and that is to put in place a long-term deficit reduction plan. And my friend, the Senator from Illinois, and I and others have been working on this. Senator from Georgia and I started this over a year ago. Uh, but we had something that I believe as a new senator was pretty significant this morning, where virtually half the United States Senate came bipartisan way and said, Hey, it ain't perfect, but this makes sense as a way to move forward. Um, we've got to do our jobs, and I want to particularly thank uh, the Senator from Illinois, who has worked so hard on preserving the safety net uh, in these discussions. Some of my colleagues on the Republican side who recognize we've got to sort through a way to reform our tax code in a meaningful way. Um, these are acts of uh, political courage, and I commend them both. And with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka.
Washington on deficit reduction is of enormous consequence. It will impact not only our generation, uh, but the decisions reach will impact our children and our grandchildren and the future of our country. And it is terribly, terribly important that the American people become engaged in this debate. Uh, I fear that if they do not, if we leave the discussions totally to folks inside the Beltway, that the results will be a disaster for tens of millions of working families, for the elderly, for the sick, for the children, for the environment, and for the future of our nation. So my plea today is that for the American people to get heavily involved, to get on the phone, to call up their senators, their members of Congress, to demand not whether the budget deal that is reached is a big deal or a small deal or a medium-sized deal, but that the budget agreement that is reached is a fair deal, a fair deal, one that reflects the values of our country, one that understands what is going on in the economy today, one that addresses the issue of how we got into this horrendous deficit situation in the first place. And when we talk about a fair deal, one has got to understand what the American economy is today. And that is that we have a middle class that is collapsing, we have poverty increasing, and we have a growing gap between the very wealthiest people in our country and everybody else. And to my mind, at a time when the rich are doing phenomenally well, when corporate profits are extremely high, when the tax rate, the effective tax rate for the wealthy is the lowest in modern history, when you have many corporations making billions of dollars in profits and paying nothing in taxes, it would be immoral and bad economic policy to move toward a deficit reduction approach which balances the budget on the backs of working families, the elderly, the sick, and the poor, and that does not ask the wealthiest people or the largest corporations to contribute one nickel, one nickel to deficit reduction. That is absolutely wrong. Mr. President, one of the areas that concerns me very much is that in the midst of all of this deficit reduction talk seemingly out of nowhere comes the idea that we must make major cuts in Social Security benefits. And let me suggest to you that I think that that is absolutely wrong for a number of reasons. Number one, Social Security has not contributed one nickel toward our deficit Social Security Trust Fund has a $2.6 trillion surplus. Social Security can pay out every benefit owed to every eligible American for the next 25 years, and it is wrong, wrong, wrong to make significant cuts in Social Security as part of deficit reduction. It is wrong because Social Security hasn't contributed to the deficit, it is wrong because President Obama specifically campaigned against any cuts toward Social Security, and it is wrong because cutting Social Security would hurt in a very significant way millions of the most vulnerable people in our country. Mr. President, there is discussion going around about moving toward a so-called chained CPI, which would be used to determine Social Security's annual COLA, a new formulation on the COLA. Let me be very clear. When I was in the House, I introduced bipartisan legislation to strengthen the Social Security COLA because I believe then and I believe now that the current COLA is inadequate and unfair to seniors because it does not take into, a pa impact, into account the high cost of health care and prescription drugs. In my view, the current COLA formulation understates 
what seniors and disabled vets should be getting. What some are proposing in terms of moving toward a chained CPI would move us in exactly the wrong direction. It would not adequately reflect the purchasing needs of seniors, but in fact would underestimate those needs. Mr. President, the Social Security Administration Chief Actuary estimates the effects of the so-called chained CPI would be that beneficiaries who retire at age 65 and receive average benefits would get $560 less a year at age 75 than they would under current law. Now around here, $560 may not seem like a lot of money, but if you are 75 years of age and you're bringing in $14,000 or $16,000 a year and you're trying to pay for prescription drugs or health care, $560 is in fact a lot of money. And worse, if you move toward that chain CPI, Social Security beneficiaries by the time they reach 85 would receive $1,000 less a year, which would be a 6.5% cut in their benefits. So Mr. President, we are in an unusual moment in that the people who helped cause this recession, the greedy people on Wall Street whose recklessness, whose greed, whose illegal behavior drove us into this recession, they are not being asked to contribute one nickel toward deficit reduction. They were bailed out by the American people. In many respects now, they are doing better than they did before the Wall Street crash. And what many here, my Republican friends especially, are saying, no, no, no. Wall Street CEOs making tens of millions of year, a year who helped cause this recession, no, they don't have to contribute one penny to a deficit reduction. But if you are an 85-year-old senior citizen, who is struggling to take care of basic necessities, well, my goodness, we are going to have to do deficit reduction on your back. That is not what America is supposed to be about, and that is not what the American people want. Poll after poll suggests that the American people believe that we should move toward deficit reduction based on the concept of shared sacrifice, that we're all in this together. That yes, even if you are a millionaire and you make a whole lot of campaign contributions, and yes, if you are a billionaire and you've got lobbyists running all over Capitol Hill, you know what? You're going to have to help us with deficit reduction. And yes, given the fact that we have major corporation after major corporation, oil companies, Wall Street making billions of dollars in profit and in some cases paying nothing in taxes, guess what? We are going to do away with those loopholes so that you start contributing toward deficit reduction. And you know what? Given the fact that we have tripled military funding since 1997, yes, we're going to have to make some cuts in military spending. So let me conclude, Mr. President, by simply saying this. Yes, we have got to reduce our deficit and deal with our national debt. But the issue is not a big deal or a small deal. The issue must be a fair deal, one which protects Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, the needs of working families, and a deficit reduction approach which asks the wealthiest people and the largest corporations to also participate in deficit reduction. And with that, uh, Mr. President, I would uh, yield the floor. Under the previous order, the Senate stands in recess until 2.15 p.m. The Senate is in recess for their weekly party meetings. They're back at 2.15 p.m. Eastern for more debate on the $144 billion military construction, Veterans Affairs.